Number 53. Using an orbital diagram to describe the electron configuration of the valence shell of each of the following atoms. Then we have A through E. Okay, so we did a very similar question like this one in number 52. So if you need the full rundown, go back to that question first. This one will be the more abbreviated version. We've done tons of electron configuration questions by now. So you guys should know that this is the S orbital group. This is the P orbital group. Sorry, this is the D orbital group. And this is the P orbital group. And this is the F. So we should know that. And if you don't, that's totally okay. But just go back to the other questions. I also go in depth into that as well. So I'm here with you every step of the way. Um, let's see, what else? You also should know that the S's, oops, the S's start with one. S, the P's start with 2P, the D's start with 3D, and the F's start with 4F. Okay, now this is something new. Valence shell means outermost shell. And when we say outermost shell, shell is the word for the N number, right? And the N number is the large number in the front. All right? So we're looking for the biggest numbers that are in these elements, and that's going to be the valence shell. However, there's always a catch, right? It's chemistry. There's always a catch. There's, they're probably going to give you the catch in one of these questions, so we'll, we'll get to that when we get to there. Um, next is orbital diagrams. Orbital diagrams are the boxes and they correspond with the ML values. Remember those when we did quantum numbers of how many different orbitals and how many different orientations there were? So I'm just gonna list it for you guys here. The S has only one orbital, hence you will only draw one box if you have an S orbital. P's always have three different orientations, three orbitals, so you'll always draw three boxes for P's. D's will have five orbitals, five different orientations, so you will draw five boxes. And if you guys need to know Fs, hopefully we don't have to do them here, but there's seven boxes and I don't have enough room, so I'm just gonna put seven boxes, all right? Um, for these, the quickest way to do this is to learn how to do the shorthand version for your electron configuration. And that is based off of noble gases. Where are your noble gases? It's group 18 or 8A. So these are your noble gases. So what you're going to do is you're always going to find the noble gas that's before your element. And then take it from there. All right, so let's try. Let's write the shorthand electron configuration for um, nitrogen. Now, nitrogen's over here. And technically, when we talk about um, helium, helium's all the way over here, right? So technically, I don't like to think of helium over here. So technically, no, um, nitrogen doesn't really have a no, uh, noble gas that's before it. So I'm just going to do the full version for this one. So this one would just be 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, right? Because it's 1, 2, and 3. Now, the valence shell is the highest n number. So in this case, you have 2s2 and 2p3. The one is called a core element, uh, not a core element, core electron. It's in the core. It's not towards the outside, the outermost shell. So for A, when we have to do nitrogen, you just take these two. So I have a 2s and a 2p and I will draw one box for any S and three boxes for every P. And now let's draw it. For the two S, I had two electrons, so one, two, and they have to go opposite each other because that's because of the MS value. Remember, one was one half positive, the other one was a negative one half, so they have to go opposite of each other. Two P, there were three electrons here, so I have to put three electrons in these three boxes. However, electrons act just like school kids on a school bus, right? If one electron or if one kid goes in one seat, 
What do you think? Is the other kid going to sit right next to him, or is he going to sit in a different spot because it's open? Chances are, I mean, if they don't know each other, they're going to sit in different spots. So electrons always act like that. So you would say one, two, three, only when they're forced to be with each other is that the case. So this would be the orbital diagram for nitrogen. That's it. Now let's do silicon. So first, let's write the um, shorthand noble gas version electron configuration. Silicon is right here. The noble gas before silicon is neon. So I will say NE, which basically says that, okay, I have the same electron configuration up until this point. And now you continue, you continue off of number 10. So you go to number 11. So that's 3S2. And then you have 3P2. And they're both the largest numbers, right? 3 and 3. So that's your valence shell. So for B, you have SI. I have an S and I have a P. So in this case, it's 3S and 3P. I will draw one box for the S, three boxes for the P. I have two electrons for the S, so one and two. They always double up because there's only one seat, so they have to double up. And then the P's, there's two, so one, two. There you go, kids on the school bus. So far we don't see the exception, but FE, there's gonna be an exception. I'll show you in two seconds. Let's first write the shorthand version. So FE is right here. The noble gas before it is argon. So AR in brackets, and then you pick up from number 18. So 19 is down here. So that's 4S. So this would be 4S2. And now we're in 3D territory, and that's 3D1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 3D6. And now here is where your exception comes in. Here I have a 4 and a 3. And a lot of students would just include the four because that's the higher number, but that's not the case. The exception is if you have a D orbital and it is not filled, you will include in valence. The opposite, if it is filled, you will not include uh, so you, in valence. So in this case, remember a D can have a max of 10 electrons. This one only has six, so it's not filled. That's why you will include it. So both of these will be included in your diagram. So let's get to it. FE, I have a 4S and a 3D. 4S is always one. Ds are now five, so you gotta draw the five boxes, even if they're not all going to get filled. So there's two electrons for the S, so one, two. There's six electrons for the D, so one, two, three, four, five, kids on the school bus, and now you circle back to the first one. It's technically wrong if you do like one in the middle. Usually they always go to the front, all right? So just keep that in mind. D, tellurium. Let's see, tellurium is, let's see, where is tellurium? I thought I saw it before. Where is it? <laughs> Here it is. What's the noble gas before tellurium? Krypton, KR, number 36. So KR, and now we go from number 36, so that's 37, so that's over here. That's 5S2, 4D10, and then... 5P, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now what do you guys think? We see an exception because it's 5, 4, and 5. But do we include that, do we include that D? No, because it's filled. And when the D is filled, you do not include it in your valence electrons. So you would only take the S and the P. This does not get included because it's already filled for valence. So D, whoop, we have tellurium, 
So I'm going to only include the S, that's the 5S. And then we have the 5P. So the S's are always one box, the P's are always three box, you got to always include all of them. The, there was two electrons for the S, so one, two. There were four electrons for the P, so one, two, three, and then double back, and that's it. Last but not least, M-O. Where are you, M-O? I thought I saw you. I'm pretty sure I saw you. Here you are. Sometimes I even hide from me, and I've looked at this for over 10 years. <laughs> Crazy, right? Um, okay, so what's the noble gas before M-O? It's still krypton, so that's Kr. And now we take it from number 37, rubidium. So that's 5s, 2, 4d, 4, right? Are we going to include this 4d in our valence shell? The answer is yes, because it is not filled. So I will include all of this. So I'm just going to put this one over here. So we have MO, this is E. We have a 5S. So I will say that here. And then 4D, so that's four boxes. One, oh, sorry, that's five boxes. One, two, three, four, five. And now we put the electrons in. There was two for the S, so one, two. And then there was four for the D. One, two, three, four. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. There's another exception, and I'm going to put it over here. Whenever you have a 5S2, 4D4, unfortunately, this is a little bit unstable because it can rearrange itself to become stable. Now, look what's going to happen. You see how there's one lonely orbital here that's not filled, right? And there's one orbital here that has two. So look what could happen. So I can just take this one electron and put it over here. And now do you see how everyone is nice and neat and pretty? And basically it's all half filled. That's what that's called. So a 4s2, 4d4 will always rearrange to a 5s2, 4d5. Sorry if I said four before, I meant five over here. But it doesn't even have to be five and four. It could be six and five. But you'll, you'll see. Um, it's basically S2D4. An S2D4 will always turn into a S... Ooh, sorry about that. It will always turn into an S1D5. So I'm going to write that one more time up here. This is what you guys need to know. If you ever end with an S2D4, it will rearrange itself to an S1D5. You still have six electrons, but it's just rearranged. So this S2D4, you say, no, no, this is really an S1D5. And you would draw it like this as what we have here. If you drew it like we did before we rearranged it, mm -mm, your teacher or professor would probably take off points because they want you to know that you have that jump. All right. So hopefully this helped guys. Let me know what you think. Um, if you guys can get this, I mean, you guys are ready for electron configuration, orbital diagrams, all that stuff on your quizzes or tests. So Thank you so much for tuning in. If you wouldn't mind helping the channel out, click the subscribe button. You'll, you know, you'll get all of our answers coming into your feed and you'll also let other people gain access to this cool service. So thanks so much for that. Have an awesome day, guys. I'll see you in number 54. Bye-bye.